<laughs> hey Rico. Sorry about that. Hey Rico, stop music. <laughs> okay, guys, I cannot find the, how to be a, be a host. And uh, so I will record with my Mac. I hope it works. So let me share my screen. Um, so this is just a, a little um, lecture because I know a lot of stuff about um, molding and casting, so I want to show you. I will show you things that are not only related to the assignment of Fab Academy, but in general everything about molding and casting, so also manual, like using just uh, old school way. <clears throat> so let's start with a little introduction to a generic what is molding and what is casting. So a little introduction, then we can dig more into the assignment. So keywords, in molding and casting we have molds, we have uh, a model or also called a master, and then we have casts, that is also called a copy. So if you take a look in this image, this gray object, this is the model. So it is something you make, it's an original piece, you only have one of this piece. It could be, uh, for example, it could be uh, an artifact from, uh, from, it's open, it's open. An artifact from, I don't know, from an archeological site, whatever. Or it could be, uh, something that you 3D print. It can also be something that you CNC mill, um, like the one that we will make. Then this white part here, this is the mold. The mold starts as a liquid uh, material. But uh, with a moment. Um, it starts as a liquid material. It's liquid and so it goes all around your model, your master, it becomes solid, it gets released, and then you take the mold, you turn it upside down, and you use another material, which is again, first it's liquid, and then it becomes solid, to make the cast. So the yellow part is the cast piece. Out of one mold, you can make many, many different casts. So, <clears throat> Okay, this is this, the same thing that I just said in words. The mold is the negative shape. It is the starting point of the process and it can be designed and fabricated from scratch or it can derive from an existing object, a model or a master. In our assignment, we will create the mold. Uh, first, sorry, first we will create a master then we will create a mold, and then we will create a cast. For a successful job, the mold must be carefully engineered and fabricated. You have to take into account the complexity of the shape, the behavior of the materi materials, if they are flexible, if they are stiff, and also you need to know how many copies am I going to make, only one or more. Uh, the cast or the copy is the positive shape, complementary to the mold, and it is the final result of the process. The, um, so, uh, some example of molding and casting in the industrial manufacturing. Uh, for example, ceramic factories, they use plaster molds, and they use uh, slip casting. You use liquid clay, you fill your mold with liquid clay, you move the mold around and then you remove the clay from the mold, only leaving a little uh, layer of um, liquid ceramic on a liquid clay on the surface, internal surface of the mold, and then it dries up and you can cook it. Uh, plastic factories like Lego, metal molds, you start by metal molds, and then you inject the plastic, which is fuse, or you use rotational molding, or you use blow molding. Every bottle that you use to drink water or any other liquid, it's made 
by blowing into the mold. In this case, the casting material is not liquid, but it is fluid. So you take a solid material, you heat it up until it becomes fluid and it can be um, injected into the mold. And also the glass industry use metal or graphite molds <clears throat> and then molten uh, silica, like sand, basically it's sand, and you blow into it. For uh, any kind of molding and casting, we I will show you now three plus one basic type of mold. The first one, the simpler one, is a one-part mold. It's it's also called open face. Then there is the two-part mold, which is called sometimes a closed box, <clears throat> and then a multi-part mold which is made of more complex shapes. I will also show you a special one-time mold that you can only use once. So one part mold. One of the example is the mold for moon cakes or other kind of uh, cakes or um, this is very common in the kitchen. I don't know if in Japan you also have uh, something like this, but in China, in China is very common. Um, you, it's made of wood. The mold is directly carved into wood. And then the material you put inside, you have to press it because in this, ca in this case, it's like the dog of the, of the mooncake. You press it. What happens is that the wood absorb some of the moisture from the material and the material uh, reduce its shape, its, uh, its volume reduces and by reducing its volume it automatically demold, so comes out of the mold and it's easy to take out. Uh, another kind of one part mold is a rigid plastic mold and ice cubes. In this case you have a mold that is very very hard, it does, it's not flexible. And you are also using a material that is hard as well, because water, when it turns into ice, it becomes hard. So you have two hard material, one into the other. The way you can release your copy is by waiting a little bit until the surface melts a little bit and it can come out. Also, the shape of this mold and the shape of the material of the copy it's very simple when you i mean if you've ever seen an ice cube it's not a, a perfect cube but its shape is also is always sloped this way it can comes out of the of the mold then you have one part mold but with complex shapes in this case we have Darth Vader helmet which has got a lot of faces in this case, you can uh, create an object that has got such a complex shape because the, the mold is flexible. So even if uh, the surface is very complex, by deforming the silicone mold, you can release the object. And this is what the material we are going to use. We are going to work with silicone uh, rubber to make the mold. And so it will be, uh, you, you can, uh, push it and you can deform it and you can take out your uh, object. <clears throat> so one thing that we need to uh, make sure is if our model has got undercuts. So in the left side of the screen, this is a model that has got no undercuts. It means that first of all, it can be CNC milled easily because remember, with the CNC machine, the end mill is coming from above and you cannot go under uh, the, the surface of your mold. So you can only uh, make a, un, a model without undercuts in your uh, CNC machine and also uh, a, mo um, a mold that has got no undercuts is easier to release. If you are using a solid material for your mold like the ice cube tray or the um, or the mooncake mold it must be 
without undercuts. Otherwise, you are not going to remove your copy. A model with undercuts, if the undercut is small enough, you can release it if your mold is flexible. But if it's a rigid mold, it cannot come out. And also, it cannot be CNC machined. Stop me if you have question eh, every time. Uh, remember if this one was a video, no, I don't think it's a video. So a flexible mold allows extraction of models with undercuts. So probably, uh, I mean, you, you will see that uh, when you release your mold, there are, uh, the, the fact that the model is flexible will help you a lot in uh, releasing the, the copy. This is a two-part mold. This image and other images in this class I took from an instructable. There is an instructable uh, lesson on molding and casting, which I suggest you go and take a look. I will also share the link after. It's very well made and it's very good to, to take a look at it. The two-part mold, um, uh, you, for the two-part mold, you need an original to fabricate this mold. You can make multiple copies out of it, but the very important thing about a two-part mold is that you use registration keys. So as you can see in this image, all these little... So the mold, the, 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 the model is this donut, but all these little bumps around, they are registration keys. So on this side, they go under the surface, on this other side, they go above the surface and they uh, join into each other. This way, every time you unmold and you make a new mold, you can align your object in a better way. Also, in a two-part mold, when this mold is closed, you need to figure out how to put the resin inside. And so on the top here, you see there is a large opening here. This is for letting the resin come in and you also have a smaller opening this is for letting the air come out if you fill it with uh, resin but there is no way for the air to come out the resin will block the entrance and will stop the bubbles from the air from coming out and so you need a ventilation opening these are the registration keys i was talking about <clears throat> because you need to align them. There are many different ways of making registration keys. In this case, they are uh, made, homemade, uh, handmade. When you do it with the CNC machine, you can use um, cylinders, but you can also just make a long channel all around your object, which is actually what Neil suggests to do. Like this one. You see that here we have registration keys, but we also have a channel that goes all around our object. In this case, we are not looking at a silicon rubber mold, but we are looking at the 3D printed mold. So the 3D printed mold is made of plastic, which is rigid, unless you use a flexible filament. Uh, it's not suitable for very high detail model because of course the, the detail that you can get with the 3D printer is not as good as the one you can get with a CNC machine unless you are using a very expensive machine. But just for you to take a look at it, it's very interesting that you can use the CNC, the, the 3D printer to make a mold. Uh, in this case it was used, this uh, 3D printed mold was used for slip casting, so with clay. Um, this is a plaster mold. This is a multi-part mold. This is made of... No, actually it's not plaster. This is uh, made of metal. Uh, anyway, this kind of... This one is made of metal. This one is made of plaster. This kind of molds, they are a lot more complicated to create and to work with. And you don't... Uh, it depends what you have to do. In this case, this is a mold for slip casting, and so it is made of plaster because the plaster can absorb the humidity from the moisture from the clay. 
let me see. Okay, this is an example from a student in Fab Academy, or probably uh, from how to make almost anything. He made this very, very interesting uh, mold. You see that it is a cube, and it's made of one, two, three, four, five, six um, components made of silicon rubber. When you reconnect this component together using the registration keys, there is a, a positive registration key here and a negative registration key here. They are the same, all these models, all these components, they are the same, except for this one that has got the holes for the ventilation and for letting the, the, um, uh, the, 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 the resin come in. You, when the guy made these molds, he also needed some wooden uh, surface around to compress the mold. You cannot directly push on the silicon rubber to close the mold. You need to have some solid surface that will um, push all the side of the mold in an even way. Otherwise, if you try to uh, just, I don't know, wrap some um, uh, some tape around your mold and it's made of flexible silicon rubber it will just squeeze down it will not be evenly pressed then the guy just uh, filled this mold with uh, silicon uh, with uh, polyurethane resin and then this is what you get you are never gonna get a clean copy you always when you have more than uh, one, I mean, when you have a two-part two mold or a multi-part mold, you never get a clean uh, edge. You, all, you have something that's called flushing here, flush, 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 all of this flushing, you're going to have to remove it, as well as the little part from <clears throat> where the resin come in. Like this is a little channel for the resin to come in and the channel for the uh, air bubbles to go out you always have to remove this part and so if you uh, are thinking about let's go back here where should I put my channel to let the resin come in in this case you need to figure out where should I cut this channel if you put the channel right in, in on the face of this guy you are going to ruin it because you are going to have, in the end, you are going to have the, even if you clean it and even if you sh uh, you send send it away, you still have the the the, the channel for the uh, resin in some part of the mold where the mold the, the copy where you don't want to see it. So you need to place the uh, the channel for the resin in some part of the mold that you don't want to see or that is easy to remove or that is not so important because it maybe is a flat surface a surface that is not seen this is the result of this model this is a kind very complicated one i wouldn't say it's a i mean if you try if you attempt at making this kind of model it's not easy i'll tell you then there are one time molds which are fabricated with any material, but it must be destroyed to be able to extract the cast, the copy. So in this case, this is a, a mold that is made with cardboard. <clears throat> in this case, it's cut by hand, but you can laser cut this kind of mold. And then it's uh, put together with some tape, and then it's used to as a mold for concrete, but of course, to remove it, the, 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 the cardboard, you are going to lose the cardboard, and so it's a one-time thing. Uh, this is a model that is coming from paper cura. So the, the paper, it's a mesh, and then if you use that software paper cura, it will give, or other software also do the same, it will uh, make you, uh, it will basically unfold the mesh, on a surface, you can print it, you can cut it, and then you can assemble it, and you can have a paper model or cardboard model. And then this was used to 
it was filled with some kind of resin or um, I think it's resin it could be also clay or uh, or concrete but in this case I think it's resin because it's not very the paper is not humid it means that the material that was used didn't have uh, much water into it and it's very beautiful but you have to destroy the paper uh, this is another example made with plastic sheet um, again to make uh, to make uh, concrete and this is a super cool one you can for example one of our 3d scan if you 3d scan yourself you can then use uh, this is a little older uh, and it was still using Autodesk 123D Make, but now there is this software has been um, there is a new version of this software which is um, Slicer for Fusion 360. So if you use Slicer for Fusion 360, you can slice your object uh, and make you can make it with the 3D with the laser cutter. In this case, this guy it is. He didn't make the positive of uh, the 3D scan of his body, but he made the negative of it. And then he poured uh, uh, concrete into it. You see in this shape on the back, there is the, um, the positive made with the cardboard. And here it's the mold with the, the um, concrete in it. And I, I read, this was an instructable that I read. The guy said it was madness to remove <laughs> all of this cardboard. It was madness to make it because it takes forever, but it's a very effective shape. Uh, also, you can use uh, styrofoam instead of cardboard. And then there are other materials that can be used. Anybody can tell what is this material in, the, in this uh, mold? Right, so this is, um, is a mold made of uh, wooden um, blocks, just wooden blocks. Then it's, it was covered with a substrate that is normally made of uh, like straw or is it straw, yeah, something like straws. Um, and then it's rich with nutrients and it is inoculated with the mycelium. You have to put it into a plastic bag that is st uh, sterilized. And then you wait for the mycelium. Mycelium is basically the, 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 the base of a mushroom. Okay, the white part of the mushroom is the mycelium. Then the mushroom grows out of mycelium. Um, mycelium will grow by itself or around the support like substrate that you have and it will become solid then what what you do in this case you just you see in the inside you see the mycelium and here on the outside you see the, the mushroom growing out of it then if you take this and you bake it you put it into an oven you basically kill the mycelium and you can keep the the shape as it is uh, and stop the growth there are many things actually made of mycelium. There are also bricks for construction that are made of mycelium. And this is a, a model from an architecture student. Um, answer mushrooms. Okay. So there is one more technique that is called um, vacuum forming. For vacuum forming, you can have very fast results. You can combine it with 3D printing. There are open source plan for vacuum table and the material that you use can come from, for example, the water bottles for the, I think in Japan you have uh, milk that is made with HDPE bottle. In China, we have the, the non fu spring water, four liters is made of beautiful HDPE that uh, melts perfectly. Uh, this is a video. So first you have to make this plastic sheet uh, hot. And you see that when it gets to the right temperature from like white it becomes transparent. 
You can use the hot air gun or you can also use another source of heat like an oven, a toaster or something like this. And then on the other side, you have um, just half of a mold, half, sorry, not of a mold, half of a, a model. It's only half of it. And it's placed on a table that is full of little holes. And then you turn on the vacuum cleaner, you suck the air from inside of, in between the plastic sheet and the table, and, and then the, the, the plastic uh, cools down, go back to white, and you can remove it. Um, let's see, here. It is very important, okay, the, the video stopped, but it's very important that you have absolutely no undercuts for this kind of molding, uh, of technique, otherwise you are ne never gonna get it out of the plastic sheet, because the plastic is rigid and the, and the, uh, the model must be rigid. Okay, uh, this is a little, uh, like the ghetto way, ghetto style to... Um, Calculate how much silicon rubber you want, you need to make a mold. Um, silicon rubber is expensive, it's an expensive material, and also um, resin, like two component resin, polyurethane resin, is expensive. So, when you are dealing with expensive materials, you don't want to waste them. Uh, you need to find a way to tell how much am I going to need because if you make too little, depending on the, the pot life, pot life means the, the time your material uh, can live inside of the pot that you use to mix it. So if I mix my material inside a pot, then I have, this material will be alive, let's say, for 15 minutes, one hour, four hours. After that, it will start making its chemical reaction and you are not going to be able to use it anymore. It will not be liquid or fluid and you cannot pour it. So uh, if, you, if the pot life uh, of your material is pretty fast, maybe you don't have enough time to make more silicon rubber if you didn't put in enough or if you put in too much you either have another mold that you can try and, and, and make or you just uh, um, leave it in the pot and you waste it so my suggestion is to always have your uh, mold and also other molds just for fun that you can make Anyway, there are ways of telling the volume of silicon you need. It can, you can use plastic bowls, you can use rice, you can use... Or if you made your mold with Fusion 36 or with Rhinoceros or any other software, you can just select the, the void part, you can make a Boolean difference, and you can calculate, let the, then let the software tell you what is the volume of that object. Release agents can go from the more uh, professional one, the ease release that also smooth on uh, cell, or you can use oil, you can use Vaseline, you can use, uh, um, this is another kind of uh, oil soap, soap and so on. You need to know what material are you using and does my, my, my material work well with this release agent I'm using? For example, if you are using any polyurethane, you can never have polyurethane get in contact with anything containing water. Otherwise, you will have a nasty reaction. It will start making bubbles. Um, at the same time, you cannot use... Uh, um, a release agent that is made for polyurethane rubber, you cannot use it with silicon rubber. The silicon rubber will become uh, bad after two, three, four copies you make. Yesterday, Neil told us that yes, you absolutely need a release agent for polyurethane materials, but with silicon rubber, you don't need a uh, release agent. This is true, you don't need the release agent to release, 
but to protect your uh, silicon rubber mold you want to use a release agent if you make five copies okay but if you make 20 30 copies out of the same uh, silicon mold you need a release agent to protect the surface of your mold otherwise after many copies your silicon rubber will start absorbing over time it will absorb the material you are using a little bit every time until it will completely lose its uh, releasing properties all the things I'm telling you I know because they happened to me before so this was a little introduction now let me jump to Fab Academy uh, specific things for example here uh, yeah, this is a, a little um, a presentation that I made when I was in Paris three, four, four years ago. Um, it's some techniques, rubber mold and casting raising and the cold casting technique. So, to make the original piece, <clears throat> It can be 3D printed, it can CNC machine. In this case, it was completely made from scratch with piece of uh, other piece of uh, plastic and foam and some other things I had laying around in my office. Um, it could be something that already exists, like a toy or a part of a device, but you need to make sure that you are not infringing any copyright in the prop making industry prop making is the people a prop maker is someone that make a prop a prop is a property so uh, any object that you use on movies use on the cinema in the cinema use in the tv so on screen or in theaters they're called prop and prop makers always need to make a lot of the same object and they use a lot of silicon uh, molding and casting technique if I make a prop an original one and I make a call a copy you are not supposed to make a copy of something that I made otherwise your reputation is dead it happens all the time I used to be a prop maker in a previous life this is uh, this is the home made way to make a mold you start with an object that is uh, all around has got features. Then you need to create uh, um, uh, the first part of the mold. You need to make uh, divide this object into two, in two halves. And normally you use clay to just uh, create um, uh, the, 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 how to say a surface that is exactly in the midpoint in the middle plane of your object on this uh, clay you put the registration keys so in this case they are just I just took a pen and I just push my pen into the clay um, and then you cover it with silicone rubber this is a suggestion that I give all of you unless you your lab has got a de-guessing chamber so a device that creates a vacuum chamber you put your silicon rubber into this vacuum chamber and then you make the vacuum by making the vacuum all the little tiny air bubbles come out of your silicon and then you are fairly sure that you are not going to get any air bubble unless you have this and even if you can do it I suggest that the first layer of your silicone uh, when you pour your silicone the first layer you use a brush and you brush the silicone on your model in this way you are sure because you can see it, you are sure that there are no bubbles on directly touching your model. The worst thing that you can do is to find out after you, your, your silicone is, is hard that you have a big hole on the model that is the result of an air bubble. So if you brush, 
you are sure that at least a thin layer, there is at least one thin layer of silicone, even if there are air bubbles after, at least there will be a, uh, a layer that will make the, the shape flat. Okay, in this case, <clears throat> I made, uh, I want to, uh, I pour this half of the model, of the mold, and then when you, when the first half is cured, you turn the box, you remove the clay, and you go with the second valve. But if you are making a two mold, two parts silicon mold, you need to use a release agent on the silicon rubber because the silicon rubber does not stick to anything except other silicon rubber. So this was what happened. I forgot to put a demolding uh, uh, agent and the two parts were completely fused together. And so then I had to take a knife and I had to cut uh, open my mold which is not what I had in mind. So silicon rubber and silicon rubber will stick together unless you use a release agent. For Fab Academy assignment, you are not going to make, a, if you are going to make a two part mold, you are not going to make it this way. You are going to make the two part of the mold directly into the uh, milling wax, machinable wax. And I show you later how. This is another example. This is something I made during my Fab Academy. It was all about Star Wars. Even this model is a Star Wars model. It's the finger from the, what's it called? Rico, can you help me? The, the battle droids. The battle droids, there was the, the, the comic. Roger, Roger. Eh? Remember the, the one that called Roger, Roger? Yeah, Roger, Roger, that one. There was the, the cartoon. The, the, the TV show uh, for the Clone Wars and they used to take the fingers from the <laughs> droids and put them on the... as a... Uh, anyway, it's okay. Uh, maybe I'll show you a picture later. So, this is also Star Wars um, model. I This I 3D printed because I used the... the um, uh, a, a very high detail machine, uh, SLS uh, stereolithography 3D printer and so as Neil was saying yesterday unless you are using a, a, a very expensive machine you cannot get such the, de a detail, the, the same detail you can get with mold, uh, milling wax but in this case I thought that this was good enough and so I made this small tiny head um, with the CNC machine with the 3D printer then I created the mold just with paper, cardboard, and hot glue. So I just make a little, a little base with wood. I created the um, side uh, of this box and I um, used um, hot glue to, uh, how to say, to um, make it watertight so that the silicon would not get out of the box. And I stick also here, I taped the master this object to the box using double-sided tape because I am not I was not sure whether this material would uh, float on top of the silicon rubber it's really a, it's really complicated to tell the the which uh, material will will float on which other material it's not just like water and and wood so I was not sure and so I just tape the, the object down so I was sure it will not float into my silicon rubber once I pour it. Then I mix, uh, I first I measure the silicon rubber, I make the, um, the proportion with this, the hardener, in this case uh, my silico the silicon rubber I was using was like 100 to uh, 100 parts of silicon rubber and two parts of um, uh, the, the hardener uh, and then you mix the hardener the, the, the rubber is pink or white and the hardener is blue this way you can tell when you are stirring you can tell that they are well mixed 
if you are using Humu from Smooth On, the good thing about Humu is that it comes with half and half. So 50% uh, of one uh, component, 50% of the other component, and you, uh, you cannot make a mistake. Then again, I use the brush to brush Ariel, the. F yes, yeah. yeah. How do you? What, what's a good technique to mix where you don't put more bubbles into the mix? So uh, I, there is also a video that I will show you later. But the good technique is to make circular movement and not do up and down movement. You are going to hold to have a cup, and you are going to hold. Uh, a rod, a piece of wood, um, a pencil, something that you can uh, use to steer. You don't want to go up and down, you just want to go in a circular movement. And you, you, want, you don't want to do it too fast, because if you do it too fast, it's like imagine that you have your hand into water, okay? If you move your hand into water very fast, you get a lot of sound and bubbles. But if you move very slow, the water stays around your hand and you don't see bubbles and you don't make splash and so on. It's the same thing. You have to go slow in order not to incorporate too much water, uh, too much air into your silicone. But really, this I can explain forever, but you have to see it. It's really not, not easy to, to say it. Anyway, in this case, after the silicone was cured, I remove uh, all the wood and other parts, and I take out my uh, Jedi Master Head. Then I made uh, a cold casting technique. You can use, yesterday Neil showed us, uh, he was using this Cerro True, which is a kind of metal alloy that is made of bismuth and tin and other metals. And they come in different um, temperature for the, the melting point. You can have the one that melts at 40 degrees Celsius. You can have the one that melts at 100, just like water. Sorry, there's an ambulance. You can have the one that melts at higher temperature. It's expensive, but it gives a very nice shape, a very nice, uh, very nice, uh, uh, how do you say, finish. But in the industry, in the prop making industry, when you make uh, armor or a sword or something made of metal, you don't use real metal. You want to use cheap material and also something that is not so heavy. And so there is a, a, a technique that is called cold casting. Casting metal, but in a cold way, without having a foundry. What you do, you use a, a aluminum powder and resin, just resin. You can put, you can take the resin and the resin, it's better if the resin is black or if your resin is not black you can put a black uh, tint into the resin and then you take aluminum powder and you put the aluminum powder into the mold and then you you like uh, give a little you heat the mold a little bit just like you would do if you're making a cake if you're making a cake normally you take the the the, the cake tray you put some butter right and then you put some flour and then you move it around until the cake inside is completely covered with a, a, a thin layer of flour you do the same thing here also when you make a cake you are basically making molding and casting imagine that you have your mold you splash a little bit of uh, aluminum powder in it and then you remove the excess so you just want to have the outside, uh, the inside surface of the mold full of um, powder, and then you can pour the, uh, the resin inside. In this case, I also incorporated, you see this little metal part coming out. This is um, some hardware that I bought that is for making cufflink. 
So I just stick half of this metal hardware into the resin and I created this little bridge with uh, wood just to hang it. And then it ca came out. This is the coupling part. This is the material, the, the, the resin uh, cast. If you uh, finish it with a polishing, um, in this case, I used the, a cotton polish, um, what's it called? A cotton polish wheel, let's say, and then the steel wool, the same steel wool that Yuichi is uh, ad advised to use for cleaning the PCB, the same kind, uh, you can get to this kind of sorry this kind of surface finish which looks exactly like silver uh, there is no picture this is a step by step I can let you take a look at it later um, let me get out of here because I want to show you the results of this thing I really hate the okay this this is my all the things that you that I show you right now that you can find them in my documentation when I was a student in Fab Academy, and also the results of this also larger image. The result of this is this cufflink, and this is me <laughs> using this cufflink. Okay, just because I wanted to show you a picture of me. Okay, then, <clears throat> but this week you are going to make a mold with machinable wax. Do you have any question for now? You wanna take a break? No, we can go on. Okay. So, <clears throat> I'll show you how I made the, um, how I made my machinable wax mold and also a lot of mistakes and errors that I made. First of all, this is an error that I didn't make, but yesterday Neil tell, told that a lot of students, they uh, do the design on the computer, they do uh, the machine, the, 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 the wax, then they make the mold, then they make the cast, and only at the end they realize that they made a mistake and that they made the negative as the positive and the positive as the negative. Uh, and, and we left yesterday in class, but it's true. It happens so many times. It's not, uh, it's, I think it's something that has got to do with our brain that we cannot really tell the negative with the positive for some reason, but it really, really happens a lot of time, even to the most uh, smart of us. So think twice and, and talk with someone, okay, about your mold. Show your mold to someone to confirm that you are doing it right. So, <clears throat> I made this object for my final project. It's a bomb, okay? It's like a bomb, like a World War II free uh, fall bomb, okay? Um, I made this design with rhinoceros. But this mold, it's very diff. If I want to make this object and I want to cut it with the CNC machine, it's very difficult. So if your model is complicated and it's got undercuts, like here, if I try to mill it this way, you can see my mouse moving. Maybe I can do it. I want to do the annotation here. If I have the end mill coming from above, right? How am I gonna get under this surface? How am I gonna get under the surface of the mold? This bomb is like a, a cylinder, okay? So, it's, it, uh, this way it's impossible to mill. So you have to, it's not that, okay, no, then I will not do it. No, you can try to figure out how to decompose your mold and make it into uh, a way that it can be mold can be made. So this is the way I made it. I divided the bomb in two. I put the, the wings here facing up and then I invented this, this part. If this part will become a cylinder, 
it will be as large as this part and so it can go it can slip inside okay so this is the this is not the mold this is the mm, uh, the, the model the master that i want to have in the end okay so in rhinoceros i or in fusion 360 whatever software you will use i first designed what i want to have in the end Okay, this is what I want to have in the end. This is the same thing, but disassembled. Then I had to uh, create a mold. So this is the model, the 3D model of the mold. The positive part of the mold as I want it to be. And so you have to imagine that this all of this part will be filled with silicon rubber and the silicon rubber will be the negative part you can see that i put a registration key here a positive one and a negative one here and then i reverse the order down here so that i can make two silicon rubber uh, molds out of the same milled part and then since they are symmetric I can combine them together and I can use them uh, as a two-part mold think very carefully if you want to make a two-part mold in my opinion uh, the uh, I mean it's very complicated for a first timer I did it because I already knew what I was doing and I made a lot of mistakes. For a first timer, it's very complicated. And from my point of view, you don't really learn anything more than making a one-sided mold. So if we, since we have limited access to the Fab Lab and so on, I suggest you go with the one-side mold and then you get the skill. And you say, mm, yeah, I like it. I want to make a two-side mold. Okay, so how to make the uh, milling? I, I did it with the shop bot when I was in my uh, Fab Academy, but in, in our lab in Shanghai, we are going to use the SRM20. It's the same thing, basically. First, you need to make sure that your wax is very well, um, to say it's uh, secure to your CNC machine bed so this the CNC the, the the milling will happen will go up the mill will go up and down let me annotate here the mill will cut inside here so it will go down but most of the time your end mill will go left and right and back and forth okay so if you put double-sided tape under your you can put double-sided tape under your wax but the the force the stress that is going to happen on your wax mold is coming from the side so there is imagine there is some the force is pushing on the side sideways so you want to hold your wax block also on the side in this case i put five four blocks of wood and i screw this uh, wood down into the sacrificial layer and then i was sure that it was not moving for in the srm20 we are we have something that we can use to make this mm, i don't know uh, other people are how you are going to make it anyway it's up to you the strategy you want to use just remember double sided tape is not enough also because the wax is greasy so the double sided tape is it can be easily removed okay then first of all you make something that is called rough cut so you use a big end mill in my case i use a six millimeter end mill just to cut away as much material as fast as possible okay but i made a mistake first mistake i when i design my mold 
I didn't uh, think about the size of the end mill that I was going to use. And so if I go back here, this distance from the wall to the object and the distance between the registration key and the wall of the mold, it was less than five millimeter. And so what happened is that the registration keys did not cut away here and also it didn't pass through here and also here it didn't go through and i was stupid because the preview of the toolpath clearly told me this in the preview of the toolpath i could really see that the end mill was not moving here so i didn't check the toolpath and by not checking the toolpath, my rough cut actually left a lot of material. All of this material was left on my, my uh, wax. So what did I do? I, in this situation, you should do something. You should recreate the toolpath. Maybe you should use a smaller end mill and you should make a new rough cut a new roughing cut. I didn't do it. I said, okay, I can just do the finishing now. So I did the finishing. I used a very thin ball end, uh, end mill and I sand the finishing while it was finishing good here. When it started to do this other side, the end mill here, you see it got stuck into that part here, into this part of wax that was not removed in the roughing. So there was so much material that the finishing path was not expecting to see, was not expecting to find. And so it was going very fast because the finishing path is fast. You don't need to, to, go, to go slow because you already remove a lot of material with the roughing. It got stuck and it broke. And so I broke the, the end mill in my fab lab and I was like, oh my God, what did I do? What did I do? I broke it. Okay, so <clears throat> when you design your mold, you need to know what end mill are we going to use. I tell you in Shanghai, we're going to use a six, six or four millimeter for roughing and then we are going to use three millimeter uh, or, or one for the finishing. Then uh, what happened here? It broke, then it left. Uh, I, I just pushed the stop button on my machine. I lost the zero, the X, Y zero. And so I then tried to re recalculate the x y zero but it was i i did a good job of trying to find the x y zero but i it didn't for for sure it didn't went back into the right position and so you can see these lines here is because the z uh, axis was not taken well and so on also the the um, the registration keys didn't come out well and you can really see the the um, the scallop so the pass in between the pass of the and the ball and mill so i think it's better to use the flat end mill and so on so i did a lot of manual work to fix this anyway Ah, and also I made a mistake, I didn't left enough space here, I didn't left enough space for the silicon rubber to grow on top of this part, so I had to create some walls with paper, double-sided, uh, sorry, uh, uh, masking tape and so on. And here I made, I was running out of rubber, so I just made a one layer rubber and then I made uh, a plaster uh, armor uh, to contain the, the first layer of it. This is a technique that is called uh, to save the rubber material. 
you can make a glove out of rubber and then an armor made of a cheaper material but you don't need to do these kind of things anyway this is the result that i made in this case you see this mold here is not silicon rubber but this is a um, cheaper uh, kind of molding material that you can make by yourself it's basically the chalk for uh, the glass you know for the windows uh, or even the one you use for um, the sealant for the bathroom like for the shower you know it's the one that comes into a big gun that you have to push and then it comes out uh, so chalk that one mixed with um, mixed with cornstarch so it was a very cheap material but it works and this on this other side is silicon rubber so i make one side here another side here and then another component here and then this is the way it gets connected together uh, in this case what you see here is not a full object so inside of this bomb it is empty because i use rotational casting uh, rotational casting but you I mean unless you have a rotational casting machine you, you don't need to do it I did it because my final project was the rotational casting machine that yesterday I think Neil also showed uh, this one this machine is just a machine that makes you what it does, it lets you uh, turn the um, the more. Uh, let's let's make it big. So part A, part B, I put it into a mold that was secured into the rotational machine. I close the mold with um, with some tape, and then I start making this machine work at the same time while the machine rotates on one axis the inside part of the machine rotate as well in this way the 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 the, the, the resin the liquid resin inside of the mold can go all around the internal surface of the mold after 15 minutes the resin is um, solid and then you can take out the mold you can open the mold and you have the object that is made but inside this mold it is empty it's not solid okay so you all of, all of the things i did i always did it to save material to spend less money basically <laughs> okay so um one more thing is uh there is a video on YouTube which I will give you um, a link. It's a 45 minutes video, but this is a demonstration that we did in Fab Academy in Paris. And even if it's, I mean, uh, just shot with a, with a, as it called, with, with the camera, with like the, the GoPro, okay it shows all the passage to do molding and casting this is how i steer but this is at the end of it it's very important that when you're steering your material you scrap the surface the the inside surface of your of your object just like this so i'm scraping the surface of your object of the object and then also everything depends on how you are uh, what material you are using how fluid it is one important thing i will show you i already here there is a mold which i already how can i make this large okay i already use the brush here to make this uh, to to brush the surface and what i'm doing you see that i'm going up up with the cap and i'm creating a very thin look i will thin the the um, 
the, the rubber is coming down. This way, you are basically giving time to the air bubbles to go out by themselves. If you put all of the rubber all at once into the mold, then you, it's, it's most probable that you are going to, in, to encapsulate air bubbles in it. Instead, if you do a very thin, um, if you put it in a thin way and it take your time, it can take a long time, the level of the rubber go up very slowly and by going slowly it push the air bubbles out naturally. Then, I don't know if there is something other interesting thing here. There is a, here is the two component mixing the two component resin. Uh, you can take a look at this later if you have time. Okay, basically I'm, I'm done. Um, let me stop sharing here. Any questions? Oh, I'm seeing now all the things in the chat, sorry. Questions? Okay, uh, one thing about resin, two component resin, is that it is a exothermic um, reaction. So it gets hot, it gets 100 degrees hot. So if you are holding a cup, you are mixing the, the resin and you hold the cup, it's hot and it can also burn, okay? Maybe not, not burn, but it can burn. And one more thing, it is a kind of reaction that uh, use heat to, to build. So if you have all of your double uh, two component resin, if you have it, in a cup, the temperature will go up very quickly. If you spread it on a plate, on a dish, the reaction, the, 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 the reaction will go on slower because the heat will be less. The surface to release the heat is larger and so it does not get so hot. All of these things that we are doing produce heat. So if you let them get heat uh, faster, also the pot life will be slower. So you have less time to use it. Uh, now, one more thing I want to show you, share screen, is the website on SmoothOn, smoothon.com. This is where you find all the information about the material, even if you are not using a smooth-on material, basically you can find information for similar compo similar materials, even if they are not the brand smooth-on. And also it tells a lot of things, instructions, tutorial, gallery, it's just, sometimes I just go on smooth-on and take a look at what they have on because it's so instructional, so nice. So we are going to use, as a silicon rubber, we are going to use the UMU 25. The UMU 25, this is a gallery, blah, blah, blah. It also, it describes how it works. And then it has somewhere uh, the technical bulletin. So technical data, data of the UMU, UMU 25. You mix part A, part B by volume, not by weight. If you mix by weight, it's 100 and 130. And then you have the pot life is 15 minutes. So once you uh, mix it, you have 15 minutes to pour it. And then cure time is 75. After 75 minutes, you can demold it and use it. Okay, so if no more questions, what you have to do, you have to create your mold. Uh, I have 
uh, I think I have fusion open here. Okay, I, no need now to, I don't want to, to uh, spend time showing you fusion, but uh, when you create your mold, you have to remember that you are not making just an object. You are making an object and you are also making the box around the object that will take the silicon rubber. Okay, so you are, if you are making a two-sided mold, you have to create the registration keys, you have to create the vent for the air and so on. If you make a one-sided mold, my suggestion is one-sided, you have to create the wall of the mold and so on. Actually, one more thing I need to tell you, and it's here, and I, this is something you need to know. Um, give me a second, CNC milling. Hey, Severio, before hey. you're done, like, I, I'd like to make uh, two comments. Sure. Sure, sure, go on. I'm, I'm looking for Amadillo. Go, go. Okay, let, let me uh, share an image. Um, so last night at the very end of Neil's lecture, I tried to describe a method I use to not get confused about positive, mm -hmm. negatives, or whatever. But I got, I got confused reading it. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's, it's hard to describe. In yeah, it's very seconds, difficult. Anyway, let me just show yeah, an sure, image sure. I make. Because I, it's, I agree with that method, yes. I, I'm making a tutorial for mm -hmm. Kamakura, so can you see? Yeah. So there, there are three things that, that you're end, going to end up making for this uh, assignment. You're going to start with this red object, which is the final object, right? But you're going to need a soft mold, and that's the silicone mold that uh, Severia is going to has been talking about. And you're going to need a uh, wax mold, which is basically the mold for the silicone mold. So think about it in this way: you're going to make a wax mold that will make a soft silicone mold, which will then be used to make the final object. So when you're done, you're going to have these three components. Uh, to make your item. And then in addition to everything that Saverio said, the one really critical aspect of this week is safety. All of this stuff, if you, you know, in addition to heat, if you get this stuff in your eye, some of, some of the uh, material is much, much more toxic than others. Some of it is mostly benign and not problematic at all, but you must read the data sheet. Uh, next week you will be doing wildcard week and for my wildcard week I tried to do an epoxy project or not sorry a, a, a composite technique and I used a resin and I used a, a something called polyester resin which I hate and I highly uh, advise you to avoid using it because it's toxic on so many levels so when, when you're dealing with these kinds of molding and casting and resin work, please be very well aware of the safety aspects of the material you're dealing with. Thank you. Um, okay, so I want to show you one more thing. Thank you, Rio. Yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, the material we have in Shanghai, we selected the non-super non toxic one, except for the polyurethane resin. But the polyurethane and raisin, if you don't drink it or put it in your eyes, it's still okay. And don't smell it, don't like breathe it too much. <clears throat> uh, I, I spent 10 years of my life basically drinking it. <laughs> okay, let me show you. Uh, and look how you turned out. <laughs> see? Beautiful. Let me show you this one more thing. Okay. This from our... Last time we, we did this for our uh, CNC milling lecture, but this is especially important for this week. You need to know what is the size of the end mill you are going to use. Because if your 
uh, end mill is not long enough, what can happen is that one, once you are going down, cutting deep into your wax uh, block, the collet is larger than the end mill. And so if you are going down, you just cut away the side of the mold with your end mill. And you can heat the, uh, the mold, the, the, the wax with the collet. That's why you don't just normally make a perpendicular uh, 90 degree wall, but you make slope wall. The sloped wall will allow the collet to get deeper into the um, wax mold. And this is for the undercuts. Your end mill can never get in the side of the mold that are uh, of your model that are not directly um, um, reachable from the end mill. Uh, so for Shanghai students, I will let you know what is the size of our wax block and the size of our end mill today, so you can start working on your uh, on your model. If you keep your model not too deep like you don't do it too deep and you do a sloped wall and you leave enough space around, you are going to get a nice mold. If you do things too uh, compressed and too small or too deep, you might have uh, some problems with the end mill. Okay? So, thanks everyone for staying. I think I can stop the recording.